baptism and the act of birth. And we spoke about that the other day in the fact that since the 19th century, every hospital in the Western world has been performing the sacrament of baptism. Contrary to your belief that baptism happens in a church, every time a baby is born in a hospital, because they created the local government areas and because they turned all local government areas into councils and councils into hospitals and hospitals being structured around wards and all of us being in uh, our patients, that every baby born since the 19th century in Western countries has undergone the sacrament of baptism, the act of birth, the salvaging of their soul, the transmutation mutation of their soul into gold somewhere stored in sacred penitentiaries in the world. They have cursed us. Well, the origin of their black magic, and the, and the number is obvious, 666. The, the number is obvious. The origin of this system, the beginning of this system in the present form was in 1609 in the transmission of this particular transaction of 666 ounces of gold. Now, of course, when you think of the inner and you think of the middle temple, what you don't hear is you don't hear of the outer temple. You can't have an inner, you can't have a middle if you don't have an outer. It makes no sense, it makes no logic. And yet today, they never mention what is the outer temple. And by the way, if there's an outer temple, then of course there must be a precinct that is the land from the wall of the temple itself and to the boundary. And that often is also called the sanctuary. So not only don't they tell us the boundary of the outer temple, they don't tell us the boundary of the sanctuary. So what is the boundary of the outer temple of the inner and middle temple in London? We've mentioned this before, and you can go and read about this. We do mention it in the writs that were sent in December the 21st. And the boundary, of course, is the old city of London, otherwise known as the Golden Square. And you might know that Golden Square because it is part of the symbol with the compass of the birth of the Masonic Order, a society to keep the elite, the establishment, on the inside of the system and for the rest of us to be treated as voluntary slaves. So we have the inner, we have the middle, we have the outer temple, and of course the boundary, the sanctuary, is the foreshore of the island of Britain. And so Britain is New Jerusalem. And hence the song New Jerusalem and all the occult paraphernalia of England as New Jerusalem and of course the uh, procedures and sacred acts associated with the law and with banking that we still see today. The procedures in terms of perfecting bills, the procedures in terms of deposits, the procedures in terms of withdrawals, the procedures in terms of creating money, all of it is ritual coming from this time. Now, before we talk about what we're doing in August the 13th to offset the curses of 400 years ago, it's important that we look at the origin of money and why the creation of a temple was so important. The important, the important thing here, when we look at this, is what occurred and where does money come from and what is so important about a temple and money? Well, the importance of a temple and money goes back to the origin of money. And the origin of money and the origin of a temple and the importance of a temple and money goes back to the time of the Ixos. We speak about the Ixos uh, 3,500 years ago, 
3,500 years ago, the Ixos created one of the greatest engineering feats in history when they created the Great Channel, the two-way highway, the water highway from a city that used to be called Zion, and later it was called Zeus. And today, they flip it around so that 99% of the world is ignorant to it, and they call it Suez, just an anagram of Zeus. So from Zion later called Zeus, across to a city that used to be called Kiro, or Ki or Chiro, we now know as Cairo, in the shape of a crescent moon, a massive water channel was created. The first Zeus Canal, the first Zeon Canal, the first Suez Canal. And so from that channel, all the trade, 3,500 years ago, all the trade from India and China and Africa could all travel up, could travel through Egypt into the Mediterranean and of course connect the rest of Europe as well. And so important was this channel that it created untold wealth and untold trade and exchange. And 3,500 years ago, 3,500 years ago, the greatest stock exchange in the history of the world. Forget Wall Street. Wall Street is a drop in the ocean. Wall Street is a poor imitation. 3,500 years ago, the first and greatest stock exchange in the history of the world was Karnak and Thebes. And Thebes and Karnak was where the goods of the world were exchanged and those goods being public money, a dog, sorry, a donkey being public money, a, a cow being public money, wheat being public money, ivory being public money, gold being public money, it was exchanged by the priests of the temple complex, the biggest complex temple ever created, ever encountered anywhere in the world, massive. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres of temple complex. And it was exchanged for certificates, specific pieces of paper. Remember, the Egyptians invented paper. Special paper, special bonded paper as certificates, so it couldn't be, uh, couldn't be uh, counterfeited. In exchange for what was the most valuable money ever created, and it was the private temple money, the money of Set, the money of Isis, the money of Ra, the money of Amen, the special private temple money, which embodied the spirit of the gods and brought the spirit of the gods to the earth. And so valuable was this money that it was never permitted to be put in the hands of the, the general population. Of course, you could redeem your trade, but it was considered bad form to ever redeem your certificate, your bearer bond, into private money. Instead, what you did is that you would travel down through the bourses, these huge columns throughout the temple, where you would find the various uh, traders, the brokers, who would then exchange your goods for uh, whatever you wanted. So if you had uh, cows, you'd exchange it for wheat. If you had ivory, you'd exchange it for cows and so on. And of course, this made the uh, priests and it made the Pharaoh is extremely wealthy, incredibly wealthy. So wealthy, in fact, that when they were buried, they were able to be buried in absolute splendor of gold, like Tutankhamun, the last of the uh, Ixos pharaohs, Tutankhamun. So this is important because what we see in what has been taken from us in history is that the most valuable currency has always been private money, and private money has always been created from the ecclesiastical right, the divine right, the transmission and transmutation of spirit to the earth. And what we've been told and what we've believed, in fact, is that real money is underpinned by um, promise, by sweat, by equity, by our energy. And of course, in a practical sense, that is a key part of what makes money, money. 
But if it is not connected to some spiritual authority, if it's not connected to some private ecclesiastical energy, then it is not true money. It's not perfected money. It is merely barter. And the priests, and particularly the elite priest families have known this for 3,500 years in the secret art of what is money. When they founded the New Jerusalem of London 400 years ago, when they structured this system, they knew exactly what they were doing. I don't believe they know today. In fact, I think the banking families have become so inbred and since they ended the world in World War II and they sacrificed six million in a three and a half year tribulation, when they broke themselves from the ghettos, when they created the state of Israel, when they trashed the Talmud and when they made themselves truly believing themselves to be gods, I believe since then they have lost so much of history and knowledge to, to the point now that I don't think any of them have any understanding of what is real money. They think they know. And of course they're creating all kinds of things today, collateral debt objects, and none of it has any proper spiritual legitimacy. None of it has any proper spiritual legitimacy. And of course when their system has no proper spiritual legitimacy, then we're dealing with just a giant fraud. So, New Jerusalem as a temple, a temple for the production of private money connected to public money, the perfection of money, founded on a transaction, a key transaction, of 666 ounces of gold, weights and measures. And now we come to the present day. When you read those sections in terms of Article 117 and Article 118 of the Covenant of One Heaven, you see the Supreme Credit, you see the Treasure of One Heaven, and we have created all the Supreme Credits that will ever be needed for the next thousand years. They exist. They exist. We have created all the Universal Gold Credits that will ever be needed, and these are derived from supreme credits now what is a universal gold credit what a universal gold credit is is it is the severing of the spiritual aspect of gold the recognition that gold has possessed since it, it was infused with curses and infused with blessings and infused with the aspirations of many with a spiritual value greater than the metallic uh, form that it holds and, and we feel and we've separated the physical form and the spiritual form. And the spiritual form now is in the form of the universal gold credit. So the universal gold credit allows us to forgive the curses. It allows us to balance the books. And it allows us to make a distinction between the physical form of gold and the spiritual aspect of gold. And then, of course, underneath that, we have the silver globe credit. Now, if you're coming onto the call for the first time and you're trying to make sense of what I'm talking about, and again, you're coming on and thinking, this all sounds a bit odd and crazy. I did mention that the current financial system is predicated on the existence of the treasury of heaven. It's also existed on the basis that there is a supreme ecclesiastical money underwriting the money that is used in public transmission. Now, if you want to understand the background of what I'm talking about, I have actually put up a document on One Heaven that you can download. And I encourage you to go and download it. It is a document that says the Supreme Financial System, a new financial age. If you go to the home page of One Heaven and you have a look down the bottom, you will see a document there listed. Um, down the bottom, if you click on that, link it will bring up the document and I'll put that document into the talk show chat for people who are on the call at the moment there okay so back to what we're doing and why the significance of the launching of the currency system on August the 13th and the 14th so if 666 ounces of gold 
commissioning of a cup of 222 ounces, 444 ounces of gold 